What's up you amazing hackers, I hope you're doing well today. Let's give you guys some practical demonstrations of how to test for IDORs in a couple of different ways, shall we? So I have my setup here for you guys, I have my ferret shop open, you guys can hack along if you want by the way. And as you guys can see I have an account here, authorize1.test and authorize2.test.be. Now these accounts I've just created and I'm going to test some IDORs for you guys. So the first thing I did was I opened my basket on one of these users as you can see and um, I want to test if I can see my basket from this user on the other user. There are a couple of complexities that I want to tell you guys about. So first of all, I have my basket here. Let's say I ask this basket on the, on the other account as well uh, and there's not a unique identifier or anything. Uh, and he's going to say, oh, the baskets, that's an IDOR, because they look exactly the same if my baskets are both empty. Now, if this doesn't make any sense, I'll show you guys later what I mean when I'm using authorize. So first of all, um, I want to see my basket here. So I did open my basket. Now I'm going to check out the URL. Let's see here. So let's go back to my network and I want to know exactly what requests are being made. So let's open our basket again maybe we need to navigate away first but yeah we do so let's go to the this page to the home page navigate away and open up our basket there we go i see a get request here and i see another get request to the who am i but that's not important i just want to get this one now so a couple of things i can do i can see that it's just a get call to my basket what I can do is I can just copy this URL since it's a get call but if it would be a post or a put I cannot do this of course and I can just paste it here. Now I'm going to see that I'm getting an error that's because the juice shop doesn't allow this but there are websites where you can just do this so that's one way to test for IDORs you can just copy your URL and paste it in the other uh, in the other logged in account browser. So pretty simple that one now we can test in a few different ways as well I'm not quite ready to give up yet so let's edit and resend this request we can do this because we're working in Firefox and here we can see a couple of request headers now I'm going to tell you guys about request headers because there are some, some important things that you need to know uh, and one thing is that there's an authorization header on some websites now what this authorization header is, is it's just a w, uh, JWT token. And you can see here the bearer token behind it. So if we just scroll all the way over here, it's a pretty long token. Uh, now this is the, the bearer token of this current logged in user. It's going to contain some information, this token. So let's go and copy this one. And we'll go over to jwt.io. Now on jwt.io you can pretty much just um, take any of the JWT tokens that you have and you can paste them in here. And you can see what information is being stored in that token. Now as you can see there is quite a lot of information in here. There's my ID, there's my username, my email, my password even, the role that I have. Um, and there's a signature here as well. Now, if I want to make any changes to the JWT token, I'm going to have to know my signature. There are a couple of attacks you guys can perform on JWT tokens, but that's not the focus of this video. So we'll go into some of the, those details later. I pretty much just wanted to tell you guys that the JWT token can tell the server who you are. Now, um, I need to know my JWT token from the other user as well. So let's make any request here after I open my network tab again in my developer console. I'm just going to refresh the page real quick. And then I'm going to take any of these calls that look a little bit interesting where I can get the header. So let's just go to the request real quick. I need the response. No, I need to request headers. There we go. And then I'm just going to copy this token over. So I'm just going to select it first, copy it, and then I'm going over to my first one again. And then I'm just going to paste that token here. So again, going to have to scroll to the whole other side of the screen and paste my token here. 
Now I have a double bearer, which is not correct, of course, so I need to remove that. And there we go, we have our authorization header. Now, of course, also the cookies can matter. I don't have, the, I have them in here as well. So let's see here, we have a continue code, a cookie consent status equals dismiss, some IO, and then we have again a token in here. So this token is the same JWT token, it seems, that used to be in the top here and the authorization header. So let's also replace this one with the token that we have. So here we go, select the whole thing. We'll have to do it properly, of course, otherwise it's not going to work. So I'm just going to delete this whole token and then I'm going to look over here again. I'm going to see my token and I'm just going to copy this one just in case it's not the same as the JWT token. So I'm going to paste it here, there we go. And it does seem to be the same in this case, but in some cases it might not be exactly the same. So I'm just going to send this request and as you can see, I did get a response. And that's not good of course, that means that we have our IDOR. So that's another way to test for IDORs. You can, uh, you can resend the requests that you already made but you have to make sure that you replace the proper things. So if there's anything other than token, you have your authorization header. If there are other things that you need to replace, replace them as well. So that was another way to test for IDORs. Of course, there's another way to test for IDORs. So let's get the get call that we just made over here. And you can also, of course, just right click and send to repeater. And here you can do the same. So again, we can replace the token and the bearer here, but those are already replaced because I just did edit and resend. But if I'm going to send this again, I'm going to see that the user has some stuff in his basket or not. So that's another way to test for insecure direct object references. Wow, that's already three ways, guys. So I hope you guys are not getting bored. There are other ways to test for insecure direct object references. So you, of course, can use I, uh, authorize as well. Again, here you're going to need to paste the cookies that you need. I just usually just take the whole cookie thing here. So you have a cookie header. I just copy this header completely. There we go, paste it in authorize. And of course, you also need your authorization header. Now, I don't know if the order in which you paste these makes any difference, but I usually do it like I see it in the request. And also this is not good, I just wanted to paste this. So let's correct this for a little bit, shall we? There we go, cookie IO. And then we need to paste our authorization header again. And that's also going to give us issues because nothing is going to want to work today. Apparently, there we go. Let's see here, there we go. So that should work. I can put my authorize on now. And if I put my authorize on, you're going to see a whole lot of annoying requests. Not going to go into that too deeply, just going to add scope items only and URL not contains real quick. Uh, so I don't want the socket call socket.io. There we go, add these filters and I can start testing again. So I can go again to my basket. And here we can see the same insecure direct object reference. Now, those are already four ways to test for IDORs. There is another way that I haven't told you guys about yet, and that's going to be in our inspector again. There are a whole lot of JavaScript files in here, as you can see. For me, it's totally worth the trouble of going through all of these JavaScript. And if you have any functions that you can execute, I'm going to give you guys an example. It's not going to work here. But say you have a function get basket, and that takes an identifier. So you can say ID equals six, there you go. And if this works, you can also try it this way. Um, and I found a couple of IDORs like this as well. So um, I can tell you guys that this works. Thank you guys very much for watching. Those were five ways to test for IDORs. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Um, and I'll be making one more about the IDOR series that I have in mind, but you guys will see what it is later. So thank you very much for watching. Leave me a comment below how you test for IDORs because I'm curious about that as well. And I hope I'll see you in the next video. Bye everybody.